What's up guys and gals, welcome to the Nerd Castle for the first episode of our short permadeath playthrough of Darkwood. My name is Splattercat and I'm happy to have you here today. In case you were wondering, Darkwood is a game that just entered its early access alpha 1.0 and the first chapter was released of the game. And I figured we'd take a look at it today, help guide people along and let them figure out if the game is for them or not. If you don't know what Darkwood is, it is a crafting survival game mixed with a lot of horror. And if I had to call it anything, I'd say it's like a top-down Silent Hill with a little bit of crafting thrown in, like maybe a little bit of how to survive possibly. I mean, it's it's a unique little amalgam of games and I felt like it was worth showing off. Now the game has permadeath, but you can turn it off, so that's kind of cool. It's randomly generated each time you play, so sometimes the narrative is a little different. You know like the thing that I really liked about Ghost Ship Aftermath, how it randomizes the storyline? This game sort of does the same thing. Now we do have a major problem in doing this playthrough. And that's largely that the game does not save properly right now. It just came out this morning, I've played it all day, it does not save properly. So if I have to quit the game, essentially we lose our playthrough, which totally sucks. So what we're going to do right now is, luckily, it's my day off. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to record this, I have about three and a half hours on my hand. We're going to play this in 30 minute increments for as long as possible without closing the game so that people can get a feel for it. I am going to play with permadeath and if we die, we actually, let's play without permadeath. We'll play without permadeath for now because first and foremost, there's a lot of monster clauses where things jump out and insta kill you and it makes me sad. So maybe we won't play with permadeath, but we're going to play for as long as possible before I have to turn the game off and hopefully we'll see some pretty cool stuff along the way. I assume that the save system is probably going to be fixed pretty quickly, but... Without further ado, let's start the game off, because you're not here to listen to me blather. This load screen is going to be really, really long. The load times in this game are absolutely just brutal. So I'm going to make a cut right here, and I'll come back in just a moment. Okay, and so here we are. This is our house. We're going to start off. This is the prologue, I suppose, where they sort of explain a few of the characters, and I'll talk about the way that the game controls. So basically, it's your standard WASD game. You walk around like so. If you hold down shift, it'll make you sprint. At the top left-hand corner of the screen, you're going to see a number of meters. Red bar, you can guess what that is, health. And the bottom one's going to be your stamina. Just like many games, your character runs like an asthmatic, and so... He runs out of energy after like four seconds and he's just like done. These right here are your hot slots. If you press the tab key, it takes you to the crafting menu. Your inventory over here, you can drag stuff or you can drag things into here so that when you press that number, it will actually equip that item. Sort of useful. We can also click on things if we're close enough and it'll give us context. And so we've got pills. Pills are pretty dope, actually. Let's take pills. At least we'll be in a good mood for whatever's coming. And then we get our perp drank on in a little bit. Notes. I know these notes by heart. I don't want to read them now. Bummer. And that's all boarded up right there. An alcohol distiller. I use this to make moonshine. Alright. You can click on things to open them on up. The context menus won't show up until you're close enough, so you do kind of want to run around and make sure that the things are around. Apparently, we're going to be digging through the couch cushions. Not a good idea in my couch. That is a great way to find yourself some really, really nasty refuse. We've got a photo here that's labeled for the either the 12th of June in 1985 or the 6th of December in 1985, depending on whether you're going by the... European notation or the North American notation and that's pretty much how I remember the 80s a big ball of white and gray and nothingness Seems to be right about right. Let's go ahead and check these cages Okay, there's a rag you can click and drag things to your inventory if you want or you can shift click them or you can control click them to pick them up one at a time Cages this time they're empty. Why do I have cages in my house? I'm not feeling good about this. Oh, it actually plays music. Is it like a radio station that only caters to terrifying you? I best not enter this room right now. It's in here. 
a trap door. I used to store stuff here, but it jammed a long time ago. Well, I used to jam a long time ago, but then, you know, I got old and lazy and jamming was no longer my thing. Sometimes you just can't continue to rock. You just can't make it. I'm afraid to go to sleep. I would be too if I had a house full of bloody cages and anatomy books and all kinds of ridiculous stuff. You're a terrifying individual, man. I don't know what you're up to, but you're up to something. We got some matchsticks, a piece of wood, we've got alcohol, we've got... I mean, there's going to be plenty. Believe you me, we're going to have plenty of opportunities to make wood jokes in this game. A little bit of cloth, and so we can use some of this to craft, but right now our crafting menu is not going to be open for the tutorial. What we do, however, have is the front door key. So we can hold the click down and allow you to do context sensitive things. So you can either barricade the door or click it. I'm just going to, I'm sorry, or unlock it. It's already been clicked. Out here is a wounded dog. My dog. I don't think he's going to make it. I should end his suffering. Dot, dot, dot. There's some rope down the well. There's nothing in the doghouse. He does, I don't like that. That makes me feel sad. Doggies don't deserve to suffer. We've got a large humanoid doll with a cutout face. That is super metal. Why would you even keep that around your house? That's just like begging. Like when I was a little kid, I had like this terrifying big bird thing in my room that would just stare at you from across the room in the dark. And it was bad, especially because I started having dreams about it and freaking myself out and it just got worse. I ended up just like slamming it into the attic or something like that. Which weirdly enough, thinking about it being in the attic didn't make me feel any better. You can jump over fences with the space bar. So just be aware that that is an activity. But for now, we need to grab this axe. And if we go to our inventory, we can equip said axe right there in our one slot. We can ready it with the right click, which will pull it back and get it ready to swing at something. Or we can, once we have it ready, you can see that little text dot right there around my clicker. That's how long you have until the blow is ready. And once the blow is all ready to go, bam, you bring it down on somebody hard. We can also go over to this wood pile here, and there's going to be some repair kits. And how you use these repair kits is you just, in your inventory, you're going to click on this, I think. I forget how to use these. There is a way to use these. Let's see. I did it in the playthrough previously because I tried to record this already and I just couldn't get the game to like cooperate and I figured out about the save bug. Well, maybe you can repair your items is what I'm getting at right now. How you repair your items? There we go. You just left click and hold. That's what it is. So now you will see that my axe no longer has that little red aura around it. My axe is much stronger. We can break through these logs over here to go further. But first, we've got to do some horrible business. We've got to put our dog out of its misery. I don't know if this affects anything later on. I assume that it probably does. And so I'm going to do the right thing. We're going to try and get him right in the head so that he doesn't suffer. If you are sensitive, look away now. I'll give you a three count. Three, two, one. <laughs> And that is that. That is a heart-wrenching noise. Kind of reminds me, I was on a ranch for a while when I was a kid. We had friends that owned a ranch. And I was there when they would, like, they would just get things ready for the grocery store, you know what I mean? They would take care of the animals, and that's something to witness. It is something to behold. Let's chop this tree out of the way so that we can move on into the forest. It does cost us a little bit of stamina whenever we attack, so be aware that it's not free to sit here and swing the axe all day. It will definitely keep you, it'll keep you working out. We've got our... Oh, it's a good axe now. It's no longer a bad axe. Previously, the item was called a bad axe, which it was getting kicked out of school all the time. It didn't get along well with others. It was a total bad axe, but now it's a good axe. It's gotten its act together. It's grown up. It's become an adult. There's no escape from these woods. Only the rats can squeeze themselves between the trees. Well, that's kind of brutal. I don't know if he's talking about other people or if he's talking about actual literal rats. Judging by the fact that he had a house full of, like, serial killer stuff, I'm gonna guess that he's talking about people. I'm just going to go out on a limb right now and hope that it doesn't snap. We'll grab all of that from right there because in just a moment it's going to ask us to craft. So we have to make our first torch. Crafting in this game is very, very easy. You just have the prerequisite stuff, you click, and you get the item. That's all there is to it. You'll see here that the torch requires alcohol, matches, a rag, and a piece of wood. And so we will sacrifice our wood so that we may illuminate the darkness. There it is. It's all good. We weren't going to use it much anyways. Let's head further into the forest. I'm going to try and get through the prologue as rapidly as possible so that you can all get a feel for the real game, which starts right after we get done with this little snippet of storyline. The game essentially takes place over the course of days, and during the daytime, you scavenge, you hunt, you do all kinds of stuff, and at night, monsters come in waves, and you've just got to survive till the next day. So during the daytime, you're going to be trying to do all kinds of little storyline things, but at night, things get real, and they sort of try and end you. There's a house or something over here? Yeah, there it is. We can jump through this window and scavenge this place out. I don't know if there's a point in scavenging this place out. 
Because in a moment, well, things are going to happen, and you'll see. We'll take the rags, the bread. The bread gives you a buff so that your stamina regenerates a lot faster, so that you don't have to worry about running out of it all the time. When I was here, I ran around for like 20 minutes trying to find out how to get past this point. Very, very simple. You're just going to go up this way and around. And so there it is. We'll go, actually you gotta go all the way up and around. There we are. I knew I could do it. I believed in myself. Over here you've got a corpse which is being totally and completely absorbed by this root. I suppose it's like a good book. It just absorbs you completely. We've got clothing sitting around over here. We'll take that. And then we've got a naked lady who is ass up. When I die, I really prefer that I not be with my gluteus exposed to the sky. If my ass is up in the air, I feel like... It might be disrespectful to the dead. Then again, if people can get at least a little bit of humor out of my death and laugh a little bit, I guess I wouldn't be too upset. I've always wanted to be one of those people who has a humorous gravestone. I wouldn't I wouldn't mind. And over here, we're going to meet ourselves a friend. Aren't we? Friend? Ah, there he is, coughing into his arm. I think this one is still alive. We can search him and grab a key. We have no room in our inventory, so let's go ahead and dump the bread. We'll take the key. And so we wake up the man who was just stuck with a syringe against his will. And we are inside the serial killer house, or whatever that guy is. I'm not really sure. I haven't gotten far enough to figure out who that guy is. But I assume, I mean, no upstanding citizen has a house full of cages and, like, mutilated bodies and things. So I think we can reasonably assume that we've been captured and now we have, like, a Buffalo Bill thing going on. But we will not put the lotion in the basket. Let's go ahead and use the lockpick. Oh, we don't have a lockpick. We need to craft one first. And so we can craft a lockpick from wire. And we can also craft bandages out of this cloth. So we'll go ahead and do that. And now, in order to use it, what we'll do is we'll come back over here. We'll left click that. You can also just right click and then hold down the way that you would use a weapon if you're not in your crafting menu. It looks like he's totally getting down. Like he's getting totally hyphy right now. Like next to the floor, just moving around to the beat. And we've got the lockpick, which is going to allow us to get into here. Which is then going to be super swell, because we'll get ourselves a flashlight. And we'll get ourselves a shovel. Now, why do we need a shovel? Obviously, we don't dig this situation, so why would we need that? Well, because we're going to chip away at this door right here. That's right, everything in this game that's like an access point can be destroyed. And so there it is, we've destroyed the door. Let's go ahead and open it on up. We want to be careful. Oh, hell. Get the flashlight out. Nothing in the cage. Just came out of there. What's in... No, never mind. You can push furniture... What in the hell? You can push furniture, in case you were wondering. It's noisy, but you can use it as a barricade sometimes to keep things from getting to your door. And then, after the night is over or whatever, you can open this back up and push it on out of the way. It actually works fairly well. we got a Jenny over here. The generator is turned off, yet I can hear a faint metallic sound of an engine. Turn on. Yeah, sure. As I reach my hand towards the power switch, I suddenly hear a voice. Gasoline. Gasoline. Suddenly, the voice turns into a rumble. What are you looking at? Get me some booze! You don't need to be so demanding. But you know what, generator baby? If you want me to turn you on, I'll do my best. There's nobody on the table, though he looks just like me. The figure on the bed is wearing a worn coat and a weathered hat. His eyes are fixed on the hilt of a scalpel stuck in his forehead. Warm wax drips from the wound onto the metal surface. I don't recognize his face, but I know who he is. It's me, isn't it? That's totally me right there. That's exactly what I looked like when I was laying on the ground, and it's not like the Sega Genesis era where they recycled the same models for everything. I bet that's me. Let's open this crate on up and see what goodies are inside. Got gasoline, a lockpick, wood, nails, and a dog tag. Mackles K I or K1 1918. 
All right, our flashlight is looking like it is just about out of juice. Let's turn on the Jenny so that we don't have to worry about it. Oh, that's right, we have to use the gasoline. So to use the gasoline, you're gonna do just what it says on the screen. You put it in a hot slot, and then you ready it just like you would a weapon, but next to the generator, and then you press the button as though to swing the weapon, and it'll just refill it. Works out pretty fine and dandy. And so now the generator is all turned on, hot and bothered, ready to go. We don't have a weapon. Let's make ourselves a weapon. How about that? Make ourselves a stick board or a nail board. It's better than having nothing. So now we can actually defend ourselves. You can see there I can ready it and take a swing at somebody if I need to. Really stick it to somebody if you can aim it well enough. Let's check some of the remaining rooms. It doesn't look like I can get out of the front door. It looks to be barricaded. I better not leave the house at night. It's safer in here. Are you sure? Are you absolutely sure about that? Who's there? Oh, wow, there's somebody talking over there. Who's there? Please, let me out. Boogie, boogie, boogie. Ooh, I will... Nope, get, get away from me, psycho. You better get away. Back up. He's got suspenders. Never fight a man in suspenders. And how do you want to get out now? You think you can manage all by yourself? Can you hear it? Yeah, I hear it. Oh, he what in the hell? No, 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 no. Generator. Oh no. Oh. Okay, made me jump. You got me. You got me. You made me jump. All right. Rise and shine. And so now we have the wolf man. I could feel your stench from afar. You should be thankful that I don't have an appetite for carcasses, eh? He hides his face under a hood. I can feel the smell of wet ground and fur. I came after your reek to inform you about something, but looking at your face, someone has already done just that. These woods are full of little trinkets. Treasures. If you find anything valuable, I'll gladly have a look at it. Maybe I'll even give you something in exchange. My hideout isn't very far to the southeast of here. Remember this, because the likes of you always crawl back to me. <laughs> He's been shot through the heart. And you're to blame. You give Wolfman a bad name? I don't know. Oh, I almost forgot. A little welcome present. With this unusual bucket, you'll be able to drink our local crystal clear water straight from the well. You'll see. When the night comes, you won't be able to live without it. Alright. We can show him an item, we can trade, or we can gossip. Let's show him an item. Oh. What a beautiful thing this is, meat. I know who it belonged to. Wolf giggles as he looks at the dog tag. You'd like to know too, huh? It's funny that someone who would like to speak so much won't ever say a word. I'll give you some advice, almost for free. If you want to know more about where this thing came from, find the woman who stinks of chickens, eh? You'll find her in a cottage close by to the northeast of here. Wolf makes a step in my direction. If you find anything worthwhile from her, do remember that I like information. It would be wise to live in good terms with me, comrade meat. Taking a stroll through the woods after dusk means certain death, meat. Better find some walls to hide behind before nightfall and pray for the morning light. And obviously we can trade things with him. We've got a bucket, we've got some mushrooms. The mushrooms are used to level up, and so we'll use those in just a moment. However, we can't really afford anything, so I'm not going to concern myself with it too much. The bullets are incredibly expensive. Then again, I've never found a gun. I've found several other things that you can use as weapons, but a gun? Nay. I suppose that's it for us. Over here at this oven, we can cook our mushrooms, which will give us... It calls it essence, I suppose? And it fills up the syringe. Once you get a full syringe, you can level up, which just gives you like a perk. If you think about it in Fallout standpoint, it's, it's not really like a stat boost or anything, but they're just random stuff. So they give you chances to critical hit. They make it so animals like you better. It'll make it so that you don't get as tired from swinging weapons. Basically lovely little perks that are nice to have while trying to survive the night. And believe me, when nighttime gets here, we're going to need to survive. I know from previous experience that there shouldn't be anything in the house. And so I don't think we're going to waste any time. Instead, what's going to happen is out here outside our house, there's a generator that powers our lights. It'll keep things at bay, sort of. 
And so what we want to do is we need to get out here. We need to find ourselves some lovely, lovely gasoline. Let's jump through the window and be on our way out. We want to be careful about animals, though, because if you die, you lose the remainder of the day. And so you sort of lose out on your scavenging time as events begin to happen as you run through the game. Day by day, new things will begin to happen. So you kind of want to make use of all the time that you've got. The map is not so helpful. The map, eh. The map is a little bit... You'll get used to it, that's what I'll say, is you've got to learn to navigate by... You need to learn to navigate by landmarks, I guess, because it doesn't give you a heading or a facing. I mean, this is up, obviously, this is east. But it doesn't mark you on the map, and so you'll just kind of have to learn that this is sort of like two dog tails and a fart away from this to the east, you know what I mean? So, oh, no, 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 no. Bad doggy. I don't want to be friends. Well, I do want to be friends, but I don't want to be friends with your teeth. I am not dinner. I'm I'm cool. Believe me. I mean, I don't have really any way to prove that. I can't, like, pull a Fonzie right now and be like, hey, and prove how cool I am. But I would prefer that we stay on good terms. The forest is pretty... Ooh, a chest. So there's a bear trap, a small caliber clip, and seven matchsticks. Not anything that we can use too well, to too great of an effect, but... It's better than nothing. When night gets here, that bear trap's going to be very, very useful. Let's try and hustle. The game will give us a warning when we need to go back to our house. I don't see anything. you got to be kind of careful because sometimes the things that can be looted don't necessarily look like something that can be looted. The game does randomly generate the map as well, so... The same things that were to the east the last time I played the game are not going to be to the east. That's not a lootable. It sort of looked like one. We don't want to get too far away from the house. There's a pile of logs, so there's six nails and a couple of boards. If we could find another log pile, we could make ourselves a weapon, which is really what concerns us right now. We need a weapon very, very badly so that we can fight things off when nighttime gets here. If we can't get a weapon, it's going to be a night that is filled with cardiovascular activity. Believe me, we will be getting our workout on if we can't find a weapon by night. Over here, this is a mushroom pile. Oh, it... you were poisoned. Your sight has been worsened. I don't know how to fix this. This has never happened before. I don't think we'll necessarily die from being poisoned. But I doubt that it's a good thing for us either. I don't think we want to hit up... Ah, do we want to hit up Chicken Lady yet? Chicken Lady's in the same spot she was before and I bet I can find her. We found a shrine. Ooh, more useful goodies. So now what we can do is we can make ourselves a plank with nails, which is better than nothing. We actually have a weapon now, so we can defend ourselves, if only slightly. Our health is going to be a little bit low by the time we come out of this poison. Oh, yeah. So does the shrine get marked on my map? It does. Okay, so the shrine is right there. I don't know what this is right here, this black line. Not really sure. Never really been able to pinpoint exactly what it's supposed to be. I assume the shrine might be used for later. I did also want to point out, I don't know if I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but... That poison needs to go away. There is a poison antidote recipe you can get from the chicken lady. Eh, we don't want to be too far from home, and I'll tell you exactly why. If you get too far from home, you can't get back to your house in time. And basically what happens is when nighttime gets here, you start to drain out health until you drink from the well. Until you drink from the health, you will die very, very quickly. So we need to fix the well first and foremost by putting the bucket down in it. And the well is dry during the day. So I think I'm just going to scavenge lightly around my house until we get a little bit further. I'm not going to risk picking any further mushrooms until we get our health back up. By finding some cloth and bandaging ourselves. Who knew that band-aids would help us out with sickness? But they do. They do seem to do that very well. There's a hole right here. I don't know what this does. I assume that later on we'll be able to dig from it or something with a shovel. A crate. It looks like a dead guy on a crate. Ooh, batteries, a bear trap, some gasoline. Okay, all useful objects to have. Oh, there's a dog. Is it going to attack me? I don't know that it will. Sometimes they back off. They're sort of neutral. Occasionally they attack. Occasionally they don't. Let's maybe... 
Let's just go around the perimeter for now. We don't have a lot of time to get anything else done. I'm going to break the episode off right here. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me in the Nerd Castle for this first episode of Darkwood, the Chapter 1 Early Access Alpha. I hope that you enjoyed our gameplay so far. I look forward to seeing you in the upcoming episodes. Remember, this game doesn't save, so if you're going to purchase it, just be aware you may or may not be able to save your game. Some people are telling me that they can save their game. I am regrettably not able to save mine. So I'm going to play this for as long as I can today, get as many episodes out of it as I can, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye, everybody.